Amazon and Jeff Bezos just bought MGM Studios for $8.45 billion. Now that sounds crazy, but in this video, we're gonna unpack that and see did they overpay? Is there some upside within this deal? And what can we learn as entrepreneurs within this transaction? Because success leaves clues. Let's go. If you're new here, my name is Christopher Dede and welcome to my channel, the number one place for peak performance, entrepreneurship, and personal growth. So the first thing we can learn from within this transaction as entrepreneurs is competition. It is extremely clear and evident that Amazon and Jeff Bezos is positioning themselves to compete against the behemoth of Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu. Now granted, they've already been competing against all of these streaming services because they already have their prime video series with their movies and TV shows, but it just wasn't to the same level. The quality wasn't the same thing. So what did they do? They looked at the competition. They said they want to become a major player within this industry, and they started looking at what the competition has already done. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So what did they look at? They looked at Disney+. Plus. Disney+, Plus did the acquisition of Marvel, of Lucasfilms, as well as Fox. And in fact, when the Disney Plus series did the acquisition of Marvel for $4.24 billion, everybody thought they were crazy. But right now, the whole Marvel universe has made over $23 billion in revenue. So it has paid time and time again what the initial investment was of Disney. So this is what Amazon wants to do. And so much so that actually Jeff Bezos said after the transaction that they're really looking forward to uh, redesigning, redeveloping MGM's huge quantity of content that they have and in fact they have over 4,000 movies to look through as well as 17,000 hours of tv shows and most notably it's the bond series and franchise so that's like the the main i think reason why they bought the mgm studios in itself because if you just look at the bond series in itself it's the third highest grossing series of all time. So I'm really interested to see how they're gonna play that, how they're gonna develop it, is it gonna end up on a Prime and so on and so forth. But they don't just have the Bond series within that. They have the Rocky Creed series, they have the Legally Blonde, they have Tomb Raider and so much more. So the main thing we have to look at over here is that the competition level was evident and it was positioned, we're like, hey, we wanna compete. So then they start looking at the competition, they're like, what did they do? Let's do it and make it better. The second thing we can learn as entrepreneurs within this transaction is positional awareness. Now what do I mean by this? There's a lot of analysts that are saying that Amazon grossly overpaid to buy MGM Studios but they still say the same analysts that there it is still a good deal and they're gonna make money out of this for sure. Now the question is why did they overpay? Why couldn't they gotten it for less? And that's the positional awareness. Amazon knows that they're the big kid in the playground. And compared to other people that were interested, they're not afraid to throw around some money to kind of show their positional of like, hey, I'm the boss, I'm the one that could kind of take care of this and so on and so forth. They didn't want to have back and forth competition. And if you just look at the numbers of Amazon in itself, it's actually quite mind blowing. Currently, their company's worth is over $300 billion. Last year in transactions, they made $400 billion. Their cap hit is at $1.5 trillion. So what you have to understand is where you are as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, within the awareness of your position of your competitors and everybody around you. So if you are the big boy in the playground, such as Amazon, you have more leverage and you could use that leverage. If you're a smaller person, you have to be more eloquent and strategic on your approaches. So this is the one thing that I learned. These people were not afraid to throw around their money, even though they knew that they were paying more than the market that was demanding. And one example that Amazon has done this before was actually against diapers.com. Now diapers.com was a company that was getting quite popular in 2010. And Amazon noticed them and they noticed them because they wanted to go into that industry and sell diapers and sell uh, products for uh, kids, babies, and infants and so on and so forth, right? And when they noticed it, they're like, hey, I wanna buy you out. And it was a bit difficult in the beginning. They didn't necessarily want diaper to get bought out. But Amazon's like, hey, I'm gonna buy these people out. And what they did is that they started putting their diapers on sales like 30% less expensive than the actual market value of a diaper. So everybody bought it from Amazon. And then when people were calculating, they're like, yo, Amazon's losing over $100 million per trimester doing this deal. But they didn't care. The only reason they did it is because they didn't want people to go to diapers.com. They wanted people to buy from Amazon. So then diapers.com had no choice but to sell it to them, even though there was Walmart that was interested to buy as well. They just know. 
as business people, Amazon, that they are the big kid in the playground and they utilize that to their advantage. So the whole point over here is be aware of where you are within this figurative playground that I'm talking about and you have to work accordingly. If you see the Sean Valley within this video so far, don't hesitate at all to give me a like, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification to find out when our weekly videos come out. So the third thing we can learn as entrepreneurs within this transaction is upsell. Now this is probably the most important thing within this video, my personal opinion, because there isn't a as powerful capital driver for businesses as upsell. So when somebody comes in to your business or approaches you, that's one thing, you're gonna sell them what your main thing is, what the thing that they wanted, right? But the upsell is where you're gonna make the real money. If you just think about an example as McDonald's, when you walk in and you wanna have a Big Mac, you go in to have a Big Mac, what do they ask you? Would you like to supersize your drink and fries? Now that doesn't cost them anything to put a bit more fries or to make the drink a bit bigger, but it costs you a couple extra dollars. So if they do that with every single transaction, then over the long run, they're gonna make so much more money. Another example is Ikea. I love this because there's a huge dichotomy. Ikea has sold billions of dollars of their uh, Swedish meatballs. This company sells furniture. How in the heck are they upselling Swedish meatballs? That's the upselling model. So that's the understanding that we're gonna have over here, that Amazon did this acquisition for nothing other than upsell. Now this acquisition is gonna bring a lot of great movies, MGM and so on and so forth. So maybe it's gonna entice you to get a prime membership, to have two day delivery, same day delivery and so on and so forth. Their main goal of Amazon is for you to continually buy toothbrushes, batteries and whatever else you need. So they're just making it more enticing by bringing MGM and making their prime TV series, movie series so much more attractive that people will sign up to their prime membership and continually buying all their products through Amazon. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got some great insights on the understanding of the entrepreneurial approach within this transaction of MGM for Amazon. Now the question of this is, what did you learn as an entrepreneur within this transaction? And maybe your second question is, do you think that Jeff Bezos is gonna replace Daniel Craig now as the next James Bond? Now I'm just joking because that's not physically possible because it's actually another company that has the right to pick the next James Bond. It's a bit more complicated, but yeah, that would be funny if Jeff Bezos ends up being the next James Bond. Anyways, I hope you guys have a phenomenal day. Here are some more videos that could interest you. Over here, I have my entrepreneurship series. Over here, I have my peak performance series. Over here, you have my book review series. And you have my profile picture. You guys can click, subscribe, and join the family. Hope you have a blessed and grateful day. Let's go.